In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can take our shapes out of Maya, push it into ZBrush, turn those shapes into Dynamesh, and then run a small level polish on here to build some micro beveling between all of our parts and uh, make sure we have a solidified object. So I'm just going to take this piece that I have, and you can see it's uh, made out of uh, multiple pieces here, like this. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the whole thing, and I'm going to hide the old one. I'm going to hit Control H like that. And I'm going to select uh, this piece here. I'm going to go ahead and um, do this where I'm going to merge them all together. And so I'm going to go to Mesh Combine, just like this. I'm going to delete history, Alt Shift D, like that. And then I'm going to convert um, the Smooth Mesh Preview that you see into actual polygons. So we're going to go to Modify, Convert, and then do Smooth Mesh Preview to Polygons. When we do that, the default for this is a divisions of two. Put it on zero, you got your base cage, you do one. You can see it's gonna be the next division up. Um, but I would wanna do probably something like th at least three. Um, we could even do something um, as high as four. Let's take a look at this. Uh, that might be a little bit of overkill, but we can make sure that um, you know the shape that we have is nice and solid. Uh, there's plenty of geo because whenever we push this over to ZBrush, if it's too low, you'll see some of the uh, poly shading and things like that on there. Um, so let's go ahead and save this out. I'm just going to say File Export Selection. I'm going to use the OBJ type. I'll have everything on except for materials. I'll export that and I'll put it on the desktop and I'll call this Temp Maya Shape like this and go ahead and uh, export selection. Now I'm going to hop on over to ZBrush and then with inside of here I just want to, if you tap the comma key for the light box, went to project and loaded up this Dynosphere that you see here like this. I'm going to go ahead and import that uh, OBJ in. So I'm going to go to the tool area, say import, go to my desktop, do the uh, temp my shape like you see here. And we should have the object come in. I'm just going to tap F to frame the object and tap F again like this. So everything um, is looking the way that I would expect. Now if we um, wanted to turn this into Dynamesh, it's possible to uh, go ahead and do that. Um, now one thing I could do, because these are separate objects, I could go to Poly Groups and then do Auto Groups like this, and then let's turn on the Poly Frame, and you should see that it's going to turn these into different uh, Poly Groups at this point. Um, if you wanted, you could do a Mirror and Weld. Um, so that would actually exist under Geometry. We're going to go to Modify Topology, and we can say Mirror and Weld. That way our poly, uh, poly groups are the same on both sides. Not a big deal, but just uh, something to kind of note for that. Um, so now if we went to Geometry, we could uh, turn this into Dynamesh. We can go open up the Dynamesh area. I'll turn off this button for Dynamesh. I don't want to turn on the blur. Now I could try a value of um, maybe 500 or so. It uh, really depends on what the size of this object is. I'll try something like 250 first and see what that looks like. So I'll just hit uh, Dynamesh for this, and it's going to take a little bit depending on the size of the object, the uh, poly count for it, and should run through that. And what we should be able to see is uh, if we've got enough polys with our Dynamesh, there shouldn't be a big jump or any real kind of change on our model. It should just look like our same model if we turn the uh, polyframe on. You can see that it uh, turned this into Dynamesh and it turned it into a solid model at this time. I can turn off line that way we don't see all the polyframe on there but we can see what it generated as far as uh, uh, shape goes. Okay so I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn the polyframe off and what I want to do now is run a very low polish on this. So you can see we've got a very harsh edge right in through here. There's a little bit of rounding that just happened because of the uh, nature of what we just did with the Dynamesh, but uh, I want a little more rounding on that. Um, just so you know, like in the real world, um, anything that you look at and you see as a perfect edge, there is no real perfect edge. There's just 
always some slight imperfection to an edge and there might be some light that kind of hits that uh, edge and produces a highlight. So whenever you're doing game res geometry, uh, this nice little bevel that we're going to kind of add to this will show up uh, whenever you bake your information and then that will kind of make your edges kind of pop a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to go to deformation and we're going to use instead of polish by feature, if you do this one, this looks at the poly groups that are in the model and it kind of hardens and solidifies those edges based off the poly groups. So we don't want that one. We want to use the uh, polish here. And if you take the little donut hole thing out, that just makes the uh, polish that much stronger. I'm going to run something maybe in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 right around that ballpark. So de again, depending on uh, the size of the object and things like that, uh, it might take a little bit longer to run this. Um, one thing that I've found that I could have done before I do this, let me just let this one finish out, is store a morph target. And if I store a morph target, it gives me the ability to uh, get values in between uh, what we just ran. So I think this looks pretty good. I'd be pretty happy with that. But I'm going to hit undo real quick and put it back to its original state. And then I'm going to do what we talked about. I'm going to go and do a morph target. I'm going to say store morph target like this. And we're going to go ahead and go to geometry and uh, I'm sorry, not geometry. We're going to go to deformation and run that polish again. This time I'll do it even stronger just to make sure like it's really obvious the effect that we're going to do. So maybe we'll try like 75 ish somewhere around in there. And so then that should become pretty obvious that we're running this polish at that point. Um, uh, because we stored the morph target, it's going to store that position of the model. Uh, the shape of the model before we run this operation and we should be able to run um, a slider to get uh, values that are in between uh, the one state versus the other so you're gonna have two after this is done you'll have two different states for the model you'll have the model that you stored and then the new shape that you're going towards so I think this is getting close to being done Okay, that polish is done now, and you can see um, with 75, kind of what we've got going on here. Now let's go back down to our morph target area, and you can see that we should have a slider that will allow us to slide back to 100% of the original, and then if we go back down towards zero, then we're getting the full effect of that polish. So this gives you some finer control to kind of figure out you know exactly where you want that polish to be. Now if you go in a negative direction this uh, actually does the opposite of the polish so the polish kind of smooths things out and then this negative value on the more target will actually crispen up details so um, it could be po uh, possible for you to use this as a operation if you wanted to pull in more detail on something and kind of trying to sharpen up uh, detail that you have you could take um, your model store the morph target uh, run the polish feature on there and then do a negative morph on there and uh, it'll sharpen things up so I'm kind of happy with maybe uh, something right around in this area for things and if you don't need the morph target anymore you can say delete morph target and now you've got a new uh, model that you uh, should be able to start work working with, right? Um, and it should give you enough geometry. You can see it joined all these together, gave it the little bevel and everything. But if we tab B, uh, sorry, not B, the common key, and I'm going to go to the brushes, and I've got a hot key, um, not a hot key, a uh, shortcut that will actually go to some different brushes that I've made. And I can go ahead and go here for some of these, and I've got some tech things that I can kind of drag out uh, so maybe I want to just do some kind of piece like this and put it on the drag rectangle and our drag dot and put these type of uh, extra details and elements on here for something like this this uh, makes it really easy to kind of do this kind of detailing that you want on the model for this stage at this point so that should be a uh, little workflow for you to get the shapes out of Maya, get them inside a ZBrush, get your uh, edges all polished up, and then put yourself in a mode where you're ready to add some, some very fine or tertiary kind of details to your model.